Hello everyone, Nate Fisher, Mazella Lifting Technologies Lifting Specialist, here today to talk to you about the basic components and verbiage that go along with a flat web sling. Anytime I pick up a flat web sling, it's gonna be made out of two things, either nylon or polyester. Either one of those is gonna have the same capacities, so if you're worried about the working load limit, that's not gonna be a concern. One of the things that might be of a concern to you would be that nylon stretches up to 10% over the course of its life, polyester only 3%. Both of them have different advantages as far as chemicals go, so that might be a reason to choose one or the other. Either way, the industry is moving more towards polyester. One of the most important components of any flat web sling is gonna be the tag. The tag must be legible. On the sling I'm holding right here, we've got one of our DuraClear tags. It's one of the most advanced sling tags in the industry. The reason for this is because the information on here is actually printed on the back side of the tag. With the information printed on the back side, even if your sling tag does get dirty or scraped a little bit, it can wipe away clean and the information is still legible. Now, when I pick up a sling, it better have a tag on it. No tag, no use. It'll tell me the length of the sling. It's also gonna tell me my capacities in a vertical choke and basket. And it's also gonna tell me some nomenclature that we'll get into to identify the sling. So if you're ordering it or you see it on an order or a quote or a rigging inspection report that we give you, you'll understand how to identify what is on there. Let's go right into the nomenclature that we're gonna talk about. Oftentimes I'll get a call from a customer asking me to explain the verbiage that he sees on his quote, order, rigging inspection report that we give him. Not to mention too, I'll get a call from a customer asking me to get them some two inch flat web slings. It's simply not enough information. So I'm gonna walk you through an example of a sling that I have in my hand and the verbiage associated with it so that we can be on the same page when you guys need to order some flat web slings. In my hand, I've got a two inch wide sling. Now, it's an I and I sling, okay? There's an I on each end. So in our verbiage, we're gonna start with E and E, I and I. So that's gonna be the first two letters that you see when you need to order your flat web sling. The next number right here, two, is gonna denote the number of plies that are in the sling, or layers. The more layers that may be on there, the stronger the sling might be, up to about four layers. Over here, you've got this number eight, and that may vary from manufacturer to manufacturer, but on any flat web sling, you can get edge guard or non-edge guard. This sling right here does not have edge guard. That denotes the number eight right here. You can refer back to your manufacturer if it's different than what you see right here. The last two numbers that we see right here are gonna denote the width of the sling. So in my hand, I've got a two inch wide sling, zero two. Now, we talked about measuring the sling from bearing point to bearing point. So after all that, we're gonna show that it's four foot long. So everything that you see right here is typically gonna be the verbiage that you see on a flat web sling. So another popular flat web sling that you may see out there is what we call an endless sling. Uh, some people may call it a continuous loop or an infinity loop, but when we designate the verbiage on a sling like this, we're going to start off with EN for endless. We talked again about the plies. We've got two plies on this sling denoting its strength. We've got the number nine right here. We talked about having edge guard or not having edge guard. This number nine shows that it's got a little bit of black edge guard on here to protect it. And then these last two numbers right here talk about the width. So this is a one inch wide endless sling. And now when we talk about the length of it, we're talking again about bearing point to bearing point. So when I've got this sling stretched out like this, it's three foot long. Some other flat web sling verbiage that you might run into that I want to cover right now would be a reverse eye, which denotes a certain type of eye on the end of a flat web sling. That would actually start with an RE, or we've got what we call triangle choker flat web slings. It has certain triangle 
fittings on each end of the sling, and that would start with a T seat. But as we move along our verbiage right here, it's all gonna be the same. It's gonna denote the number of plies, along with the edge guard or non-edge guard, and then the width of the sling with the length bearing point to bearing point. In conclusion, flat web slings can be great, strong slings to help you get your job done, but they're not made out of steel. We gotta protect our slings from tears, cuts, holes, nicks, anything of that nature. Now, if you have a question about any of the verbiage you might see on your sling or something coming up with a lifting application that you have, please don't hesitate to give us a call. We'll walk you through it.